Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on medical inhalers for the cannabis market. I'm Jackie Green, Global Business Development Manager for Presspart and I'm based at Blackburn in the UK. I've been at Presspart for seven years now and I'm also responsible for managing all the cannabis related projects within Presspart. So if you wish to engage with us on such a project, then I'll be your point of contact. I'll now share the presentation. So hopefully you'll take the following points out of today's presentation. The advantages of using metered dosing to obtain the best drug delivery. Developing a cannabis formulation for metered devices. Understand the importance of correct component selection and testing. Taking a device from concept through to commercialization. So a little bit about Prescart. We have over 50 years experience in the high volume manufacture of pharmaceutical components. Our components are contained within over 85% of the world's MDIs. Last year, we manufactured over 1.1 billion components and we boast world-class facilities supplying components all around the world. In terms of our locations, our three manufacturing sites are based in Europe. So Blackburn in the UK produces canisters and other deep drawn metal components and also houses our Inhalation Product Technology Centre or IPTC. Marsberg in Germany produces cans and has multi-component assembly facilities. And Tarragona in Spain has injection moulding plastic manufacturing facilities. However, we do have a global footprint as we also have five sales offices to support our customers around the globe. So in terms of our facilities, uh, just some examples of uh, our state-of-the-art facilities that we have. So in the top left, uh, that's our multi-million pound dedicated actuator manufacturing facility at Tarragona. And this was opened in 2019. Underneath there, it's also a picture from our Tarragona site. And this is specifically putting the caps onto the actuator bodies in this department. Then in the centre atop, we have our multi-million pound industrialised plasma manufacturing facility at Blackburn. Underneath that is another from Tarragona, and this is one of our multi-component assembly machines. Then top right is a robotic arm that's placing cans into our wash plants at Marsberg. And then finally underneath is uh, an image from our IPTC facilities at Blackburn. So in terms of products, these are not all of our product offerings, just an example of our core products, as we're typically uh, known for our cans and actuators. So these are components that are typically off the shelf. However, a large proportion of our business is actually in complex proprietary components as a contract manufacturing organisation or CMO. So in terms of metered dose inhalers, what actually is an MDI. So MDIs or PMDIs, which stands for pressurized metered dose inhalers, as they're also known, are the most commonly used drug delivery system or device for treating asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, so COPD, and other respiratory diseases. However, they're also increasingly being used for other indications as well. So why use an MDI then? Well, uh, MDIs have delivered pharmaceutical drugs to the lungs for over 50 years and are fully approved by the FDA and other regulatory bodies. But the important thing is the metered dosing. So MDIs are designed to deliver the same dose consistently throughout the product life. So it's a tried, tested and trusted system. So there's two options if you wish to embark on a, a cannabinoid inhaler. The first is standard off the shelf componentry. Obviously, this is an easy approach to launch a product into the cannabis market because the components are already available. So in terms of the cans, they can have multiple variations, including different materials, sizes and types. So we have plasma treated canisters, for example, as you can see on the top right picture. 
and this is actually a really good canister for um for cannabis inhalers since cannabis um such as uh, cbd thc they actually have more adhesive properties than standard formulations uh, in terms of the actuators there are various geometries sizes and colors and it's important to note that all of our components are compatible with all the major manufacturing and filling equipment as well. The second option would be a custom option. So this is becoming increasingly popular in terms of shapes, geometries, colours and branding. And we can offer services um, through from design right to taking your development uh, to commercialisation. So in terms of cannabinoid inhalers, it's important to select the correct component combination at the time of formulation development, because changing one aspect of either the valve, the can or the actuator can have a huge impact on the device performance. So in terms of the valves, different types work in different ways. Uh, typically, they dispense a given volume between 25 to 100 microliters per actuation or meter in volume, as it's known. Um, the elastomeric seal components or gaskets can be produced from different materials and these are compatible with different APIs and excipients. Our components are all compatible with all leading valve manufacturers so we will be able to find some suitable components for you. Uh, and then in terms of the cans, there are different sizes to accommodate different dosing quantities. They can be out of different materials, so aluminium or stainless. They can be plain, plasma, as I mentioned earlier, anodized or spray coated, depending on the customer requirement and the requirement for the API. Uh, in terms of actuators, so there are different sizes available to fit the can size, and there are also different internal dimensions, so particularly orifice diameter and jet length, and these actually determine the geometry of the emitted aerosol. Um, this generates the adequate pressure to ensure the correct speed and atomization of the formulation. So those geometries are really key. So there are some important aspects to consider when formulating a cannabis inhaler. Otherwise, you may end up with results like in the picture shown on the right, which wouldn't be pleasant for the customer or consumer. I'm sure we'd all agree. So it's important to use high quality raw materials for the formulation. Uh, isolates or distillates are often used for cannabinoid formulations. For an MDI, we tend to say that isolates are typically better because they've got a higher purity, they're easier to formulate and faster to formulate as well. Distillate can be used, but more processing methods are required, so it's not as quick to develop. And also the CBD content in distillate is typically between 80 to 90 percent, whereas isolate is greater than 99.9% .9 pure, typically. Also, in terms of the excipients, pharma grade is recommended, and also flavorings, um, if they're chosen to be used in the cannabinoid formulation, should be food grade. Um, and these, these ensure a good quality formulation right from the start. Um, however, it's best to keep the ingredients to a minimum. You don't want to be adding things in just for the sake of. I think uh, with cannabinoid formulations, it's definitely a case of less is more. Um, at the end of the day, you've got to remember these drugs are entering people's lungs. So it's crucial um, that you're putting in good quality and minimum ingredients. So regulations as well, these need to be considered. Um, legislation for cannabis in terms of handling, manufacture, distribution. They all need licenses to do those things. And also uh, we need to be wary of the THC content. This can also be an issue for formulating or handling without correct approval. Um, lots of countries state a percentage that the THC content must be within. Um, and obviously that needs to be abided by. So in terms of strength and dose, this needs to be decided as this will determine the amount of ingredients and API required and also the component types as well. Uh, especially in terms of the meter in volume for the valve. Um, do you want your solution to be your formulation to be a solution or a suspension? 
So as a rule of thumb, solutions tend to degrade and suspensions stick. So they adhere to the internal um, walls of the canister. So it's important to understand the potential implications, for example, whether a treated can type such as plasma is required to reduce these effects. Also, suspensions require shaking, whereas solutions do not. Suspension APIs need micronizing before use, whereas solution APIs typically need a co-solvent to assist in dissolution. So just a few things to consider there for the, the type of formulation that you want to manufacture. Propellant type, um, the most common is HFA134A currently, but with new sustainable low carbon propellants now being available, such as uh, HFA152A, there's different options to consider there. And our IPTC lab can assist customers with any propellant switch that they're considering. And finally, the targeted area for the delivery of the drug is also important to consider as this determines the componentry required as well as the performance that's got to be achieved from that device. So for example, MDIs are often used for pulmonary delivery, but there's also systemic delivery as an option as well. So buccal or sublingual, for example, where the deep lung is not actually the direct target for the cannabinoids. So there's a few things to consider with your formulation. Now, bioavailability. So why is bioavailability significant when talking about PMDIs? Well, to be effective, cannabinoids have to reach the endocannabinoid cell signaling system in the body. So it <laughs> sounds like a bit of a mouthful, but um, this basically means that the cannabinoid dose, for example, to CBD or THC, must be absorbed into the bloodstream. And the rate and amount that this occurs for any known drug is bioavailability. So in terms of our table shown here, if we look at oral administration, we all know that oral administration is convenient and simple, obviously taking tablets, you know, we do that all the time. However, the uptake is slow. So you're looking at between 30 to 120 minutes to actually feel the effect of, of the dose. And also bioavailability varies greatly. So between six and 20% in this particular study. So this depends on manufacturer, API, excipients and all the other aspects previously mentioned um, relating to the formulation. So then we look at topical and sublingual. Um, so the effect is fairly quick, obviously topicals within minutes because you're spraying directly onto the, the targeted area. However, bioavailability is low for topical and sublingual is not that much higher, to be honest, 13 to 19%. However, when we look at inhalation, because the pulmonary alveoli provide a large surface area and a minimum barrier to diffusion, and the lungs also receive the total cardiac output as blood flow, this means that absorption from the lungs can be very rapid and complete. So you're looking at the effect is felt within minutes and the bioavailability in this study was 34 to 56%. I have seen some inhalation products claiming to be around 90% bioavailable as well. So if you think to the purpose of MDIs, if someone is having an asthma attack, for example, they need a quick uptake and effect of the drug. So hence why inhalation comes out as being the best for bioavailability. So in terms of testing, currently testing or lack of it is actually a huge weakness within the cannabis industry at the moment. And this obviously results in poor quality controls and poor quality products being out on the market, which is not what we want. So testing should be the utmost priority of any customer thinking about launching a product to ensure efficacy and patient safety as with standard pharma products. And it's anticipated that the market will become more regulated over time and cannabis products like MDIs will get the same attention as standard pharma MDIs. So all the products available eventually should be uh, of high quality. 
So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the speed and pressure coming out of the device is key to ensuring the correct performance. So we use a few standard tests. Aerodynamic particle size distribution, or APSD, is where typically a next generation impactor, or NGI, as shown on the left there, is used. Uh, and this is where the drug coming out of the device is split up and it's actually estimated where it'll end up in the patient. So will it go into the deep lung? Will it end up in the throat, for example? And this test is really sensitive to changes in actuator geometry. So like the orifice diameter and jet length that I mentioned earlier. So in terms of the NGI, the airflow is forced through small holes, increasingly smaller holes, and the large particles stop sooner and the small particles go further into the lungs as it were. Then we have drug delivery uniformity, so DDU or dose content uniformity, DCU. So this checks the device consistently delivers the same amount of drug throughout the product life. So when you first take your inhaler, you want the same amount of cannabinoids to be um, provided to your body with that dose. And also at the end of the product life, in the last remaining doses before the product is um, complete. These two are standard tests defined in pharmacopoeias around the world. So the testing and the limits and tolerances should be very similar. And also stability studies are really crucial for these two tests to demonstrate there's no decrease in the quality of the product over time. You want the inhaler to perform the same on the date of the manufacture as it does after being stored or on a shelf for some time. And then finally, spray pattern and plume geometry, so SPPPG. <laughs> um, it uses laser imaging technology to look at the spray and shape that comes out of the device. So spray pattern refers to the shape and size of the plume as a cross section, and plume geometry refers to the shape and size when viewed side on. So this is mainly used for comparison purposes, for example, to a generic product. Um, and it shows uh, in vitro bioequivalence for generic PMDIs. And it's more for FDA um, in the US rather than EU regulations. And at Presspart, our IPTC lab has vast testing capabilities, including the tests here, um, as well as others as well. So to round off, why should you make Agency Pressport your choice of partner for the CBD or cannabis market? Well, we can satisfy your complete needs for getting a concept idea through to commercialization, providing all the services along the way to cover this project. So we offer a, a wide range of safe components with a high efficacy. We have formulation know-how and expertise with the support of analytical testing facilities with our IPTC lab. However, it's not just the physical componentry and formulation aspects we can assist with. We can also offer regulatory support for worldwide markets. And with Presspart offering this full range of services to our customers, it means that they can be assured they're launching safe, accurate and reliable products into the CBD or cannabis market. So thank you for listening to this presentation. Uh, please contact myself if you've got any further inquiries or uh, want to receive any more information on anything I've discussed today. Thank you. Yeah.